University of Virginia Health System. We're for sharing the latest health information from top minds to keep you and your family healthy. With UVA Health System Radio, here's Melanie Cole. Every year, millions of children in the United States catch enteroviruses that can cause coughing, sneezing, and fever. This year, the enterovirus that is most commonly causing respiratory illness in children across the country is enterovirus D68. My guest today is Dr. Ron Turner. He's a board certified specialist in pediatric infectious diseases. Welcome to the show, Dr. Turner. What is enterovirus and what conditions is it most similar to? Well, enterovirus is a, is a very common uh, virus of, of children that uh, causes a whole spectrum of different diseases. Uh, the most common diseases that it's associated with are summertime fevers and rashes. Uh, hand, foot, mouth disease is a, is a commonly known uh, variant of this, so that's one of the, the syndromes that it causes. And the enteroviruses are uh, cousins, if you will, to another group of viruses called rhinoviruses, which are more commonly associated with common colds, and uh, asthma attacks. The interest in enterovirus 68 is because it has some features of the standard enteroviruses, but also has some features of the rhinoviruses. And, since, and so it's this year causing uh, a fair amount of respiratory disease. So what are the most common symptoms, and are children at higher risk for EV68? Well, it certainly seems that, that this uh, virus is, is preferentially attacking children, and that would be consistent with what we know about both the enteroviruses and the rhinoviruses, that, that that's where these infections tend to occur. Uh, the symptoms uh, that, that the virus is causing are, are basically common cold symptoms. Uh, they are more likely to be associated with a fever than, than the typical fall common colds. But, uh, but other than that, they're a fairly typical common cold. The thing that seems to be a little bit atypical uh, this year for this virus is that um, there seem to be more asthma attacks associated with these infections than, than there maybe have been in the past. So if a child has enterovirus-like symptoms, when does a parent say, okay, this may not be just the flu or a cold or seasonal allergies? When do they take them to the doctor? Well, I think the best advice for parents is is really to not focus so much on the enterovirus uh, story. Uh, but most parents uh, who whose children have asthma or have had asthma attacks in the past are, are pretty familiar with the uh, symptoms of those illnesses. There's no real reason to see a physician for, for this infection uh, if all your child has is a common cold. Uh, there's no treatment. There's nothing that anybody's going to do to intervene, uh, it, it, and it will resolve on its own. On the other hand, if your child has asthma and begins to develop uh, symptoms associated with, with their asthma attack, and you have routine medications that you use at home for that, and those don't seem to be working, obviously that's a time to, to, to take your child to a physician. If there are no treatments, Dr. Turner, for this EV68, what about the symptoms? Is there symptom management that parents can do? Should they be using acetaminophen or ibuprofen to get the fever down? Is there anything they can do for coughs and, you know, the sneezing and just the overall general Ill feeling that kids get. Well, I think I think uh, parents can manage uh, this infection the way they would typically manage a cold in their child. Of course, as you know, the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics has recommended against the use of common cold medicines in children under the age of six. Uh, so we wouldn't recommend that. But certainly, uh, for fevers, to use uh, Treatments like Tylenol or ibuprofen to, to bring fever down is, is, is appropriate. Uh, other treatments uh, are, are of less use, uh, but parents can manage this just the way they would any other common cold illness. Is there a way to protect our families from EV-68? Well, I think it's always uh, reasonable to suggest uh, good hand washing, good hand hygiene. Uh, there seems to be uh, uh, evidence that, that these enteroviruses are spread by hand contact. Uh, and so, uh, that, that certainly helps. Obviously, when there's this much disease in the community, 
uh, the the risk that you're going to become infected goes up regardless of, of those types of interventions. And so in spite of meticulous hand washing, uh, it's still possible to become ill. And now what about school, Dr. Turner? Because that's every parent's sort of, you know, quandary. And, and as the specialist that you are, when would you say, yes, you must keep your child home from school during this if they're coughing or fever, or if it's just the coughing and sneezing without a fever, when can they go back to school? Well, the typical guidelines for, for when children can be in school, uh, certainly if they have fever, they, they should be excluded from school. And, and, um, and so that's, that's a relatively easy line to, to recognize. The other, um, criteria for when a child can go to school really involve when they can, can actively participate in the class and productively participate in their classes. And so if a child's got so much <clears throat> cough, excuse me, so much cough going on or uh, so much, uh, uh, if they're so ill that they would not be able to participate in class, then obviously they, they should not be in school. But there is no recommendation that uh, children be kept out of school for mild symptoms. Is the the newest flu vaccine, does that have any effect on the immune system to help fight this enterovirus, Dr. Turner? And why are we seeing so many cases of it now? Well, the, the flu vaccine, obviously everybody should get their flu vaccine. There's no question about that. But the flu vaccine won't have any effect on this virus. If there are different viruses, the mechanism of the vaccine is such that it's that it won't have any uh, impact on this, these infections. And I, I think the, the question about the number of infections we're seeing, first of all, I think it, it is unusual that these infections came, particularly that they came so early. They started in August, which is, is atypical. Um, and they do seem to be on the wane now, and we would expect that in early November these will kind of uh, go away. The reason why this year... Enterovirus 68 was the virus that popped up as the major virus. That's not really known. So really, why should families come to UVA Children's Hospital for treatment of enterovirus and other similar conditions? Well, I think uh, it, it, it is important to have your child cared for in a, in a facility that has specialists for pediatrics. Um, uh, and, and so that, uh, these children can be taken care of by a variety of different specialists as, as needed. Uh, and we of course have all of that here at the university. And so I think that makes us a reasonable place to come. Thank you so much, Dr. Ron Turner. And for more information about the enterovirus and whether you and your family should get seen, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. You're listening to UVA Health Systems Radio. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for listening, and have a great day.